There is nothing better than getting a youth intake full of five-star potential players in Football Manager. Sadly though, this isn't all that common. So I'm going to take you through today, step by step, what you need to do to maximise your chances of winning the Golden Generation Lottery in Football Manager. First of all, let's focus on the basics. The club is the most important factor when it comes to generating some good young players. And I've got some good evidence for this. You may have heard of the youth rating. This gives every nation in the game a rating out of 200 as to how good they are at producing wonder kids. The higher the number, the higher the chance you have of getting a great player from that country. So naturally, Brazil has the highest youth rating in the game and somewhere like Bhutan has one of the lowest. Now we've done a ton of testing in recent videos, including swapping Brazil and Bhutan's youth ratings around and it didn't have as big of an effect as you would imagine. So whilst it certainly will help playing in a nation with a great youth rating, it's not the be all and end all. The results we actually saw were the best players in the world being generated at the same few clubs. So the club is way more important. And that's because of a club's reputation. Sadly, your Latvian ninth division amateur side is never going to produce the next class of 92 because they just don't have a high enough reputation. It's quite an extreme example, but picture it this way. You're a 15 year old footballer and you've got a choice of signing for Manchester United or FC United of Manchester. And unless you hate the Glazers, you're gonna sign for Manchester United. In game, the best young players are going to want to sign for the highest reputation clubs they can. The good news is you can increase your club's reputation. And you can do this by simply just winning games, getting promoted, going quite far in cups, and qualifying for Europe. Even a promotion from the National League to League Two can cause a big increase in a club's reputation. So if you're starting low down, over time your club's reputation will increase. But what are some of the other things you can do to increase your chances of getting a golden generation? Well, obviously that is subscribing to the channel. Once we hit 100,000 subscribers, everyone is guaranteed a five-star youth intake. Maybe, but it's it's worth trying at least. Let's move on to facilities. And here there are three key areas that you need to focus on. Junior coaching, youth recruitment, and youth facilities. These are all part of what I like to call the invisible side of the game. The visible side of the game are things like your scouting, transfers and training routines. I like to imagine my entire club's academy, things like the under 14s, 15s and 16s, they're all part of the invisible side of the game. And so youth recruitment is basically like the transfers and scouting, but for the young players going into your academy, the very best of which are presented to you on intake day. If you have basic youth recruitment, it's likely you're only recruiting players from your local area. If you improve it and get it a bit higher, maybe you're recruiting players from a regional or even national level and if you get to the highest levels of youth recruitment, potentially you're scouting your entire continent or even the entire world. Essentially, the better your youth recruitment is, the wider that net is going to be cast looking for great young players. Junior coaching is like your training routines, except it's just for academy players. The higher your junior coaching is, the better quality training you're going to be giving your young players. And as a result, that's going to lead to higher current abilities, higher potential abilities, and even better personalities for your players. Although a bigger impact on that comes a little bit later down the line. And then we get to the youth facilities. These are where your academy players are training. It's actually a pretty common misconception that your under 23s and under 18s train at the youth facilities, but they don't. They train at the same facilities your senior team do, the training facilities. So if you want to really improve your players once they get into your team, that's what you need to focus on. A low score for your youth facilities might just be a set of goalposts on a village green somewhere, whereas a high score might be a full bespoke facility, which is gonna really improve your players quicker. All three of these work in tandem together. So the higher they all are collectively, the better chance you have of getting Getting a golden generation. If you want to know what level your facilities are at currently, using my Lincoln City Save as an example that I stream over on Twitch pretty much every weekday from 4 pm, so feel free to come along and see that one. Ask me any questions you want about Foot Manager and I'll do my best to answer. But starting on the home screen here, if we go to our club screen down here, we then go to facilities, and here you can see our youth facilities are excellent. Our junior coaching is exceptional and our youth recruitment is also exceptional. Also, if you don't know how to improve your facilities, basically you ask the board. Click on the club vision icon here and make a board request. So underneath facilities, you can ask for improvements to your training and youth. 
Go to finance, I can ask for a decrease right now in my junior coaching and networking is where you get the youth recruitment. But again, I can ask for a decrease right now for some reason. Sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. You just gotta keep asking. A lot of it will depend on how much money you've got in your bank account. So right now I've got 46 million, which is pretty decent. But often if you're playing in the lower leagues, then a good cup run can actually pay for some upgrades by itself. So now let's talk about staff. And the most important staff member is the head of youth development. Basically, he's the guy in charge of your youth academy. So getting the right person in can have a really big impact. Now, this is my head of youth development here in the Lincoln City Save, and he's actually pretty decent. The only highlighted attributes you need for a head of youth development are working with youngsters, judging player ability, and judging player potential. And this guy's got 20 for everything. Obviously, working with youngsters is very important, and you want to have a guy who's in place who knows how to judge a player accurately. It helps you out massively. There's also some evidence to suggest that the head of youth development also has a big hand in actually recruiting players for your youth academy on the invisible side of the game. However, I've not actually had that confirmed by anyone at Sports Interactive, so I'm not quite sure how accurate that is, but it doesn't hurt and it does make a lot of sense as well. So I personally think getting someone in with better judging potential is better than someone with judging current ability. Either way, I think the other attributes are massively overlooked for the head of youth development. Remember, this guy works with your young players players day in, day out. So for me, I want someone who's got some very good mental attributes. I want someone who's very good at motivating, someone who's very good at determination. I want someone who can really try and mold himself on my young players. But the most important part of your head of youth development is their personality. This is what has a dramatic impact on the young players developed in your youth intakes. Now, there are a bunch of visible attributes in the game. These are some of them, as you can see, because you can see them. But there are also some hidden attributes that have a big part in developing players. In short, hidden attributes are things such as how professional players are, how ambitious they are, how consistent their match performances are as well. You can't see a score for these attributes unless you use the in-game editor like I am right now for Erling Haaland, but you are given clues about how good these hidden attributes are in scout reports, coach reports, as well as their personality and media handling. I liken it to Messi and Ronaldo. For me, Messi is the more naturally gifted, but Ronaldo has an unreal work ethic and, well, until recently, an incredible level of professionalism when it comes to training. Meaning he got to the same level as Messi because his hidden attributes are absolutely insane. And the head of your development can have a really big impact on this for your young players. So as a result, you want someone who's got a fantastic personality. My guy, for example, is a model professional, which is one of the best personalities in the game. The reputation and scouting knowledge of your head of youth development is also pretty important. However, gathering evidence for this is a little bit harder than the previously mentioned attributes and personality. But my logic for this is essentially you've got a choice between David Beckham and some Sunday League guy. You'd obviously go towards David Beckham because he's the big name with a big reputation. So young players are likely going to want to play for a bigger name. Equally, if your head of youth development has really in-depth scouting knowledge on 15 different countries, it's more likely he's able to pull some good players from those countries. But I tend to follow the idea that the club's reputation and scouting network is way more important than the head of youth development's reputation and scouting abilities. It's also quite important to have a look at the preferred formations, although I tend to kind of ignore it because I just want someone who's gonna get some good players for me. But essentially, if you play a 4-3-3 DM wide, then this guy would be a perfect fit for you because he's gonna bring players through that fit that formation. If you're playing a 4-4-2, for example, then maybe this guy wouldn't be the right fit for your team because he'll pull through some players who are going to be playing in slightly different positions to what you like to play. But finally, the biggest part of getting a goal generation is luck. Right back at the start of the video, I described getting a golden generation as a lottery, and that is exactly what it is. Now, maximizing everything that I've spoken about in today's video essentially is buying a load more tickets to that lottery. You've got a much higher chance of winning, but it's not a guarantee of getting a golden generation every single season. But that's the beauty of Football Manager. You just go again, and again, and again. I also spoke at the start of this video about some experiments we did about youth ratings. I'm going to leave one of those videos on screen for you to watch right now.